What is up, everyone? Welcome to A Sum of Two Buses. Today, we're going to talk about the voodoo of summing. Definitely an interesting topic for live audio, especially for someone like me, who stays mainly in the digital realm. Now, there are plugins that emulate this sound, and analog outboard gear options that can help you create this sound. And then there's what we're going to be talking about today. What is summing? Of course. Let's briefly answer that before we move on. Summing is one of those many factors that give analog that specific sound. Summing is exactly what it sounds like. It's the summation of all your inputs, your groups, effects returns, etc., to result in a sum of two buses or a stereo mix. Now, summing in the digital realm relates more to how the algorithms crunch the ones and zeros to create your mix. And yes, there can even be a sound in how things are digitally summed. Now, analog consoles can sound immensely different depending on how hard you hit the main bus. Depending on the genre and the console, of course, how hard you hit the main bus can result in a very complementary sound. It can result in something somewhat close to compression, harmonic saturation, and it can even exaggerate the curve of your mix. Let's shift our focus to the DLive. And now for those of you that are unfamiliar with the DLive platform, IO-wise and sonically, there are no differences between the S-Class and the C-Class. The only differences are in redundancy options, slight differences in surface options, tactile control, and card slots. Now for touring, I usually run an S5000 Surface with a DM64 mix rack and an expansion DX32 loaded with their amazing 32-bit Prime preamp cards. Today, and for the duration of the show, I'm on a C1500, which is their smallest Surface, coupled with the DM0. Now for those of you familiar with the DLive, you may have noticed that it feels like the metering is extremely fast and the desk output might be a hair on the quiet side. The desk does have incredibly fast metering, which you can change in the metering ballistics. Now you can find your metering ballistics by going to Surface, go to Meter Ballistics, and here you can see the settings that I have for this demonstration. Now with such fast metering, this could in turn make you run your show a little bit more on the conservative side. But there is something interesting that happens when you drive the desk on the hard side. Today's audio example is going to be a little different. I wanted to provide an example that would make sense for overdriving the console. So I was lucky enough to get a rock band out of New York City called Albus. I'm so psyched to be working with them again. This band is chocked full of some of the most incredible New York City musicians I know. They recorded this live in the studio with a live miking approach. That way we can focus on demonstrating something that would relate to real live show mixing. Now here's a couple notes for the first demonstration we'll be doing today. First off, there are no main bus left right processing. Sad face. The only thing on our left right main bus is this EQ that you can see I set this up as an emulation of my Waves Pool Tech EQ curve, which I use in Super Rack. Why aren't you using your left-right processing? Well, since we will be talking about summing, I couldn't leave my processing on my left-right because it would alter the summation and change our outcome. I wanted to demonstrate the actual summation that was happening within the desk, hence why I pulled my Waves insert on my left-right. Now, in order to achieve this, I set up all of my inputs in this mix to hit groups, and then those groups hit the left-right. Then I have an all groups DCA that controls the overall mix sending to my left-right. Please note, I set up this show with my DCA all groups at zero and my main mix at zero, or nominal. We will start by listening to five different settings. As you can see, I set up scenes that incrementally change the differences between these two buses. I'll demonstrate. All group down 3 dB, Main mix up 3 dB. This is our original mix. This is our group driving a little hard into our left right. Up 3 dB. Our main mix down 3 dB. This is our group driving even harder. Up 6 dB. Our left right down 6 dB. And for our last scene, our all group DCA is up 9 dB. And our left right is down 9 dB. All right, let's hear some music already, huh? We'll start with my original mix, which has the all groups DCA at zero and the main mix at zero. Then we'll back it up and we'll go through each scene.
right, that was the original mix. Now watch the faders for the changes. crazy right now i printed all the different versions of the mix and i wanted to show you what the waveforms look like that way you could see how the transient information is being affected now i have to say it's pretty cool that the desk has a sound when you push it really hard instead of going into square wave city just look how limited those waveforms are especially plus nine it looks extremely aggressive, but sounds very transparent. Now remember, I have no main bus processing, and that looks like the handiwork of an L1 or L2. It's just mind-blowing. Now this sparked some creative interest in me, to find out if the same summing voodoo was happening at the group stages. Okay, so now for the second demonstration. I removed all my drum bus processing and set up an all-drum input DCA which we will then use to drive harder into our groups, and we will use our all-group DCA to compensate for level change. Now, like I did for the first demonstration, I set up a couple scenes, as you can see, all offset by 3dB. Watch the faders as I go through the scenes. Now, let's start with the original, and I'll do the same thing that we did for the other demonstration.
pretty crazy, right? I'm not sure I'm hearing the same voodoo magic at the group level. So let's look at the waveforms. As you can see, it doesn't appear to have changed all that much, if any. Either way, we can definitely tell there's something cool happening at the left-right. Who would have thought to drive a digital desk in order to change its sound? I have to give my boy Tib Shabai some credit for being brave enough to drive his mix that far into the red. Now please be careful with this and don't try to run your desk in the red until you know none of your input channels are going to implode. With all that said, it really makes me appreciate the time Alan and Heath put into this desk. And it definitely makes me think more about gain structure possibilities with this platform. So I hope you dug this as much as I did. Be sure to tune in next episode when we do a classic plug-in shootout between the Waves and the D-Lives LA-2A, 1176, and 160VU. Well, that's it for this episode of A Sum of Two Buses. If you dug it, please like, please share, please subscribe. Until next time, take care and be safe. So many people running scared, a thousand